Hello and welcome to this Office 365 walkthrough. This video is intended for brand new users of Office 365 to familiarize yourself with the Admin Center. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using what Microsoft calls the Enterprise 3 Plan or the E3 Plan. And this is what my Admin Center looks like. Yours might look a little bit different. But here's the basic layout. In the center of the screen, you basically have all of the common commands that you might want to click on. Along the left-hand side are all of the menus that you might want to use, and this gives you a lot of control. Let's take a look at them. Starting with the Users area, you'll find that you can add, delete, deactivate users here. There's also a Contacts area and a Data Migration area, which is more focused on Outlook and Exchange functionality. Groups are a very important area for you to get familiar with because this is how you will manage groups of people that have access to things like SharePoint or shared mailboxes. We're going off to an interesting one called Resources. And these three links aren't really that similar. Rooms and Equipment is so when people create a calendar request in, say, Outlook, they can request a conference room or a projector. Sites has nothing to do with your business sites or your locations. Instead, this is a list of SharePoint sites that you have inside your Office 365 account. So you can see if you had an HR site, it would be listed here. Next, we have the public website. If you do not already have a website for your company, then you can use one of Microsoft's recommended providers, or you can create your own corporate site using SharePoint. Moving on, what we're going to do is talk about the billing area. Now, I'm not going to click on many of these links because there is a lot of information that's personal on here. But you can see there's all of your subscriptions to various Office 365 services, your bills, your licenses, and you can purchase services and get billing notifications. I'll just show you the licensing area, and you can see that I have an Office 365 E3 account I can see how many people I can add to the service. I have 26 people. I can do Power BI, and I also have Project Online with Microsoft Project for Office 365. I'm skipping the support area because that's just a link to request Microsoft support to contact you. Under the settings section, we have services and add-ins. Here is a long list of services that Microsoft provides that you can enable and configure for Office 365. For example, you can enable two-factor authentication, configure Skype for Business, and even configure Sway, which is a sort of PowerPoint-like application. Security and Privacy allows you to configure password policies, like how long it takes before a password expires, and whether or not people can change their own passwords. It also allows you to configure sharing, so you can determine whether people can share information outside your network. Domains allows you to add your corporate network domains to Office 365. By default, you're going to get one account, which is what you signed up with, and then you'll probably add your corporate network, but you could add more. Moving on to the data migration area, Microsoft assumes that since you're using Office 365, you might be moving off another platform. So here's where you can import data from Gmail or upload old Outlook files. Now we're moving on to the report section. Have you ever purchased an application and then you're wondering what features people are using? Office 365 provides you insight like that with built-in reports. And so you can see here there's a number of active users, email activity, people that are accessing SharePoint, and any other app that you have enabled in Office 365. Now you might be noticing a lot of white space here. There should actually be reports displayed here that show you usage over time. There's a reason for why those reports aren't displaying right now, and I'm going to show you how to figure that out in just a moment. Security and compliance run deep within Office 365. This is your central portal, if you will, to manage your auditing of data, protection of data, and also data loss prevention, which Microsoft terms DLP. Now let's head over to the service health section. 
If you'll recall earlier in this video, we went to the report section and I was showing you active users and number of files and SharePoint usage, but I had expected to see some charts and graphs. They weren't displaying. If I come here to the service health area, you can see that there's an incident. And sure enough, it's saying can't generate reports. And it further says admins are unable to generate reports from the Office 365 admin portal. So essentially, I now know why those reports weren't showing. I can also refine my criteria by using these menus on the left. Similar to the service health area, we have the message center. The message center will also inform you of potential incidents, but it will also give you a timeline as to what new features are being added to Office 365. Maybe even features that have been deprecated, they're removing from Office 365. And it's also just giving you news and updates so you can stay up to date on your Office 365 environment. The recently added section gives you a little bit more detail at a higher level. This is your 30,000 foot view of your Office 365 environment, saying here are the updates that happened over the last few months, and also giving you some sense as to what's coming up in the near future. Now let's head over to the last section of this left side panel. We have the admin centers, and here is where you can dive in and manage and administer certain applications like Exchange, OneDrive, Yammer, Power Apps, Flow, any other applications that you have installed on Office 365. We're not gonna dig deep into all of those, so that's just a quick overview. Next, we're going to focus our attention on the top left to that blue square with the little dots. Uh, Microsoft refers to this as the waffle. And here with the waffle, you can see this is your way to access common applications, everything from Microsoft Word to your calendar and email. All applications that you might need to access that are web-based can be accessed from here. Next, let's head to the gear icon. This is the settings area. Some of these settings are for you and others are for the entire Office 365 implementation. So don't go changing a theme unless you know exactly what you're doing. You can set up notifications, change your password, and you can also set the default home screen. Even if you're an admin, you may not wanna to go to the admin center every single time. You might wanna to go to mail. So you can change that here. Just to the left of the gear icon is that little bell icon. That's your notifications bar. In the notifications, you will see important notices from Office 365 coming to this one central location. Now let's head to the bottom of the page where it says feedback. Microsoft really does appear to be paying attention to this feedback that you give. So whether you like a page, you wanna change the page, you wanna add more features, I would highly recommend that you go in and use this feature. I use it quite frequently myself. So there you have it. That's the Office 365 Admin Center. In future videos, I'm going to deep dive into some of these technologies within Office 365. Thank you for watching this Office 365 Admin Center walkthrough. As always, if you're watching this on YouTube, We'd really appreciate it if you pressed the like button. Please also feel free to comment in the comment section below.